I had a rather unusual experience yesterday. I was taking my truck to pick up a load of supplies for a rural school, and I drove my truck to the bottom of the lane and then got out of the truck, leaving the engine running, got out of the truck to walk around and get the mail out of my mailbox. And just as I came to the front of my truck, there was an explosion under the hood and parts, body parts flying. Uh, but they were not human parts, thankfully. It, it was uh, about a four-foot snake, what they call down here a chicken snake, a rat snake. And sure enough, uh, this serpent had swallowed a rat. And so the rat was still intact in its stomach or somewhere in its body. And I guess it had climbed up into the truck to digest its food. At that point, it had come into contact either with the fan or with the serpentine belt, whether it had some affinity for a serpentine belt or not, I don't know. But in any case, it carefully uh, sliced the snake into pieces, and it was quite a grisly mess. It knocked off the serpentine belt, took me three hours to get towed, and a new serpentine belt put on. Uh, $175 later, I was ready to roll. but. My son reminded me, although I uh, crushed the serpent's head, uh, I myself was not bruised in the process. And the timing was excellent, otherwise I might have been out on the road and who knows what would have happened. Anyway, it began to stir in my mind some thinking and I, I remembered that the serpent is very significant in the scripture from the third chapter in Genesis to the third last chapter in Revelation, the serpent seems to be everywhere. And we read about this serpent, that old serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and uh, he's the great antagonist against the human race, and has been all through history. But I thought specifically of that verse in John chapter 3, in verse 14, which says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now this came from the Lord Jesus himself as he spoke to Nicodemus, and he was driving home a very important point. Now of course it was Moses who lifted up the serpent, it was Christ himself who was going to be lifted up. He didn't lift up something, he himself was lifted up. And the question goes back, to that story in the wilderness, why did God tell Moses to lift up a serpent, a bronze, a brass serpent? The word um, nahash, which is used for serpent, also is used for brass. You remember how when the people began to worship this serpent of brass many years later, the king took it and ground it into powder and said, nahushtan which means a, it's just a piece of brass. But the point that was being made by the Lord in allowing Moses to make this serpent was that in order to save us from our sins, the Lord Jesus had to be made in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Now the difference between the serpents on the ground that were biting the people and causing them to die and the serpent on the pole was that the serpents on the ground had poison in them. There was no poison in the Lord Jesus. He was sinless, and yet he was there for sin, on account of sin, and taking the place of our sin. He was made sin for us. And so uh, the serpent on the pole brought life. The serpents on the ground brought death. And so he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, but he was not sinful, of course. He was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. Well, my little story, um, not the um, <laughs> destroyed serpent. Many years ago, I was in Israel, staying at a hotel up on the shores of Tiberias, uh, the Sea of Galilee. And I noticed that it was a fairly old hotel, and the elevator over there, they call it a lift, the British term for it, had the logo of the elevator company on the panel, and it was the serpent on the pole. And the name of the company, now just called Schindler, 
was originally Nehushtan Schindler. And so I found great enjoyment in riding up in the elevator. Almost all of the other guests, except our little group, were Jewish people. And as we rode up and down in the elevator, I would say to them, do you know this symbol here? Do you know what this means? And some of them did, and some were not so clear. They could read the name Nehushtan, and so I would remind them of the story, and that it is the tendency of the human heart to worship the wrong things, to worship the creation rather than the creator, and how the Jews fell into this problem. And the Lord Jesus explains that this serpent that was lifted up on the pole was only an illustration that we all are in the condition of the Israelites dying in the wilderness, poisoned by sin, and that we needed to be able to look and live, to look to the Lord Jesus. And so here we were in a lift with the name Nehushtan Schindler, Nehushtan, a piece of brass, or Nahash, the serpent, and there was the picture, and I could remind them of these beautiful words of the Lord Jesus, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And of course, you know how the story goes on, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Oh, what a wonderful story it is. The one of whom it is said, the very first promise concerning the Lord Jesus, as you know, what's called the proto-evangelon, the, the initial message that God gave. He gave to Satan himself and said that the seed of the woman would come and crush the serpent's head, and in doing so, he himself would be bruised, but he would defeat the enemy. Thanks be to God, as we look forward to that day, when that old serpent, the devil and Satan, is bound and cast out, and God's people at last will be delivered from this wily serpent who sneaks up into our lives and who causes havoc. If we keep our eyes on the man of the cross, now the man in the glory, he'll give us victory every time over that old serpent, the devil.